What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Gadia, and in today's lesson, we're going to learn 10 advanced adjectives. Are you ready? If so, grab a pen and your vocabulary notebook, and let's kick off. So the first C1 adjective that we're going to learn today is affluent. Affluent. It's a synonym of rich, but it's more formal and powerful. And it can also mean having a good standard of living. And now let's look at three examples. The first one, many of the world's most affluent countries are also the world's smallest, like Switzerland, Singapore, or Luxembourg. Many of the world's most affluent countries are also the world's smallest, like Switzerland, Singapore, or Luxembourg. The second example, he was born in an affluent family. He was born in an affluent family. And one more example, they're living in an affluent neighborhood. They're living in an affluent neighborhood. Now let's move on to our second adjective, which is hectic. Hectic. It means busy and full of activity. And now three examples. The first one, I find it tough to get used to quiet summer holidays after a hectic lifestyle during the academic course. I find it tough to get used to quiet summer holidays after a hectic lifestyle during the academic course. The second example, the hectic pace of modern life can lead to stress and anxiety. The hectic pace of modern life can lead to stress and anxiety. And one more example, I'm afraid I won't be able to meet up this week. I have a hectic schedule. I'm afraid I won't be able to meet up this week. I have a hectic schedule. Let's continue. Our adjective number three is reluctant. Reluctant. It means not willing to do something or hesitating before doing something because you're not sure that is the right thing to do. And after this adjective, we use an infinitive to be reluctant to do something. And now, a few examples. The first one, she is reluctant to take sleeping pills and prefers natural remedies. She is reluctant to take sleeping pills and prefers natural remedies. The second example, the government is reluctant to take severe measures again. The government is reluctant to take severe measures again. And the last example, a lot of people are reluctant to travel abroad this year. A lot of people are reluctant to travel abroad this year. Our adjective number four is at most. At most. It's used to emphasize how important, great, extreme or serious something is. It's followed by a noun, so you need to use a noun after at most. And now let's look at three examples. The first one, coronavirus is a matter of the utmost concern at the present time. Coronavirus is a matter of the utmost concern at the present time. The second example, we need to handle this situation with the utmost delicacy. We need to handle this situation with the utmost delicacy. And one more example, the venue was decorated with the utmost care. The venue was decorated with the utmost care. Now we're going to look at our last C1 adjective, which is sheer. Sheer. It has multiple meanings. First, it can mean steep, almost vertical. For example, 
It's such a sheer cliff. It's such a sheer cliff. The second meaning is almost transparent when we talk about clothes or material. For example, she's wearing a sheer blouse. She's wearing a sheer blouse. We can also use sheer to emphasize the size, degree, or amount of something. For example, I was impressed by the sheer size of Australia. I was impressed by the sheer size of Australia. And the last meaning is utter. And in this case, sheer must be followed by a noun. Very important. For example, sheer joy or sheer happiness or sheer coincidence. For example, the Great Barrier Reef is sheer beauty. The Great Barrier Reef is sheer beauty. Now let's move on to our five C2 adjectives. Number six, bleak. Pronunciation, long E. Bleak. And it also has different meanings. The first one. If a situation is bleak, it means that there is little hope for the future. An example sentence, the future looks bleak if there are new outbreaks. The future looks bleak if there are new outbreaks. We can also use bleak to describe a place that is empty, not pleasant or welcoming. For example, it's such a bleak town in the middle of nowhere. It's such a bleak town in the middle of nowhere. And lastly, this adjective is also used to describe cold and unpleasant weather. An example sentence, I wouldn't like to live in a place with constant bleak weather. I wouldn't like to live in a place with constant bleak weather. Let's continue. Our adjective number seven is blunt. Blunt. Like one of my favorite singers, James Blunt. It also has different meanings. The first one is the opposite of sharp. For example, the knife is blunt. The knife is blunt. The second meaning of blunt is a very direct person who says exactly what they think. An example sentence, Russians have a reputation for being blunt. Russians have a reputation for being blunt. And to be blunt is a synonym of to tell the truth or honestly. An example sentence, to be blunt, I think your previous book was better. To be blunt, I think your previous book was better. Number eight, comforting. Comforting. If something is comforting, it makes you feel less sad or worried. And now let's look at three examples. The first one, thank you for your comforting words. I feel much better now. Thank you for your comforting words. I feel much better now. The second example, your company and support have been so comforting. Your company and support have been so comforting. And the last example, I find it comforting to watch series under a blanket on a rainy day. I find it comforting to watch series under a blanket on a rainy day. And our second to last adjective, fulfilling. Fulfilling. Something fulfilling makes you feel happy and satisfied. And now let's look at three examples. The first one, teaching is a fulfilling job. Teaching is a fulfilling job. The second example, having a fulfilling job has a positive impact on your life. Having a fulfilling job has a positive impact on your life. And the last example, working abroad is a fulfilling experience. Working abroad is a fulfilling experience. And last but not least, paramount. Paramount. 
It means more important than anything else. And now, three examples. The first one, developing a vaccine against the coronavirus is of paramount importance. Developing a vaccine against the coronavirus is of paramount importance. The second example, maintaining a positive outlook is paramount in times of crisis. Maintaining a positive outlook is paramount in times of crisis. And the last example, investing in clean energy is paramount. Investing in clean energy is paramount. So guys, that's it for today. I hope you learned new adjectives. And if you want to learn some more, check out the first edition right here. And of course, if you enjoyed this English bit, please don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up, to share it with your friends and family, to subscribe to my channel and catch me on Instagram. With that being said, thanks for watching and see you next week. Ciao for now!